Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so you finished off in this center piece here and you're exiting out of a super duo, I hope. And then you're just going to take your needle and weave it up to through the top hole of that super duo. This one allows me to try not to bend the crap out of my needle. And it looks like I just might. There we go. So I'm exiting that way. Now I'm going to go into the next super duo. So you can see there's like a row of super duos. See on the top here? Let me show you. On the, on the side of the, the, the Rivoli, there's one row of super duos here. There's one row in the very middle. And there's another row this way. That's why we did three rows. You want to be exiting out of one of the holes of the middle super duo row. Okay? And this is where you're going to use your crystals. So you're exiting out of this hole. It's going to be really hard for you to see. Let me bring this up for you a little bit. You're exiting out of this hole of the super duel. You're going to go across into the next super duel, but in the opposite hole. Like so. See? Exiting here, this side. And I'm going to exit on the next super duel on that side, putting this Shirosky crystal in there on a slant. So it's kind of like diagonal, see? It's on a slant now. Pick up another crystal. You're exiting on this side of this super duel. You're going to exit on the other side this time. So sort of like zigzag, basically all it is. So now your super du your Shirosky crystal is exiting that way. Okay? Pick up another one, exiting on this side, going to exit on this side now, like so, pulling that on a diagonal. Okay, see? That's how that's coming. Pick up a crystal, exiting here exit there on that side place that one there picking up a crystal and I'm just going to do this all the way around Sometimes you kind of have to get put your needle in and sit the bead in there properly, like so. There you go. Okay. So put all 12 of your crystals in. Exiting this side, I'm going to exit on this side now. Just go on a zigzag. That's all you have to do. On this side, now I'm going to exit on this side. I've got five more to put on. See, this one didn't go right exactly sideways. If you kind of give it a wrap your thread around your finger like this, 
and stick your needle in and pull your thread as you're doing that, it'll straighten your bead right out. And it should sit there because they're kind of kind of a groove in there that will hold that in, in place. And I'm going to exit here. Exit here. Making sure. And our last one, which we will exit in the bead we started in, like so. All right. So we've got this one in place. This is what you should have, and this is what your Rivoli should look like. Whoops, sorry. Like this. Is that not gorgeous? Okay, so now we're going to work with the 11 O's now. Let me just get these beads kind of out of our way here. I can't handle a bunch of beads in my way here. And let's work with 11 O's. You can use tohos, check beads, it doesn't really matter. You're going to pick up two 11 O's. You're exiting out of, oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't pick those up yet. You're exiting out of your super duo where you put your last bead on. So just come up and exit through like a step up into the crystal. Like that. And now you'll pick up two 11 O's. And you're just going to exit into the next crystal placing your two 11 O's in there like that. Okay, pick up two 11 O's into the next crystal, like so. Placing those two there. Pick up 11 O's into the next crystal and just do this all the way around. So as you can see, it's a zigzag pattern. And I did that on purpose because I really like the way it, it took effect when you zigzagged it. And it puts your stones at all different dimensions, or not dimensions, but different angles that your, your crystals just sparkle really, really lovely. So pick up two more and continue this all the way around until you have all 12 spaces filled. Picking up two, picking up two, picking up two, and picking up two. Two. Picking up two more, and now we're down to our last two beads, and that is it. Look at how gorgeous that is. Is that not beautiful? Look at the sparkle in that. It's just just lovely. So this would definitely make. This is it. This is all I did. For this entire uh, top of this ring. Just simple, easy ring to throw together, but stunning. Now, what you're going to do is, if you're using this kind of uh, bead cord, which this cord is really thick for me, um, I'm just going to run my uh, needle through these two here and see if I can actually put um, this bead cord in here. If not, I'm going to have to show you how to sew it on. And it looks like it's going to work. The sad part is, I'm not going to be able to run through all these beads again, or I'm going to make it really uh, hard and tight for this thread to go through. So there is a way to, to run through all of these, but then this isn't going to be tough enough. So. You can use this 
this this here or you can just sew your band on like I did here it's up to you but I think I'm gonna sew this on because I really don't like the fact that we can't reinforce this edging especially using Nymo thread if it was fireline maybe so I should have used fireline but I didn't so all I'm going to do is run through all these beads again I'm just going to be on the safe side because crystals have a tendency to cut your threads so let's just be safe and we'll go through this two or three times I'm going to go through it three times just so it's secured and then I'll show you how to sew them on don't you just love how I just changed my mind the way I sew this on you can do it with the stretch cord you don't unless you use fire line and make sure it's no bigger than four or six pound fire line or you're never going to get your stretch cord in there especially in the 11 o seed beads um, with the band the only thing you get to do differently with this band is adding an 11 o um, here if you use the stretch cord you can't add these 11 O's unless you want to go through all these beads and to me that's just a lot of hard work and frustration and I'm not about to do that and get frustrated with beading because if I do that then I'll be putting my needles down my beads down and I won't be doing any more beading for a while so I'm gonna make this simple for all of us okay have faith in me we are working with 11 O's and a size 12 beading needle so we should be pretty good with going through this a couple of times three times so I'm on my third time around which I'm almost finished I really love the black and gold wow it's just like very stunning isn't that gorgeous? Wow, love it. And we've got a wee bit of a uh, knot. Or my needle doesn't want to move up. Because the hole is so tiny, the eye of the needle is so tiny. Sometimes I just bring my thread down and let it um, dangle and let this untwist. That sometimes helps prevent you from getting a shit ton of knots. So I am almost through. Three times round. I've still got a bit of a ways to go. I'm, I'm going by this tail. That way the edge is good and secured. Good and safe. All right, need to go right past to the next group here. All right, now to get started with the band, what you're going to do is exit your needle. You see how these are going? Okay, this is the front. Oops. I was looking at the back. Hang on a second here before I get all confused. Okay. If you noticed on the sides here, you've got this is the back, and this is the lowest point, and this is the high point. Low point, high point. You want to be on your low point. Okay. So be exiting out of your, your two seed beads here on the low point. The high points are going to be the ones closer to the front of your your piece. All right. Now, let's get some three millimeter crystals. Let's move these out of the way for now. All right. And what you're going to do is, I'm working from the back. 
Okay, so working from the back, you're going to pick up three of your three millimeter fire polish on your needle, like so. And you're just going to make a circle. So you're going to go through your two 11 O's exactly like they are. You're exactly where you're exiting, you're going to exit the same way. So you're just making a ring with your three millimeters. Now, because this is kind of part of the shank, you want to reinforce that. So go through these three particular beads again. So one, two, and three. And then I'm going to go through the 11 O's like that. Okay. And pull. Now you need to be exiting out of this bead here to continue making these right angle weaves. So again, you're going to pick up three fire polish, three millimeters on your needle, and you're going to make a circle. And you're going to reinforce your circle each and every one that you do. Being that it's a band, being that we're using Nymo thread, that's, you know, we need it good and strong and sturdy. Okay, and be exiting out of your top bead again like so. Pick up three more. Make a circle. And reinforce. I cut corners. You know me by now. and exit out of the top bead. So you're just going to keep doing this to however length. I just put it on my finger like this to measure the band, how big you want it. You want it to be a little bit snug. Remember you have to save a spot at the end for these two uh, beads so they match over here because you won't be putting three beads on in your last revolution. So on here, I put uh, 10 groups of three on this one here, and I'm gonna do the same on this one because I like to wear it on my index finger. So I'm just gonna continue putting these on, and I will come back after you've get, gotten your, your band to the last right angle weave group or box or whatever you wanna call it. I like to cut corners again so I will jump through as many beads as I can and tighten it okay I'll do this and come back okay I've gotten to the length that I want and I've put on my last group of three now we're going to join our ring over to the other side like this so here you have oopsies here you have your two beads that you started on. Go directly across and you're going to enter into that group of two beads there. So you have one, two, three, four, five sets of beads on each side of your ring band. So you're going to pick up one fire polish. Your thread's exiting to the right, or anyway, I'm not sure what, what it'll be exiting on you, but it should be going in on the same side of your, see I'm exiting here, so I need to enter into these two beads from that side, from right to left for me. So when I put, pick this up, it's on the right side, my band's not twisted. You've got to make sure you do that right so you don't get your band twisted. And then you're going to pick up another fire polish after you've entered here and you're going to go back through making a circle again through the one on your band and pull that tight. And now you've just joined your side the same way as the other. And then you're going to reinforce this, of course. So I'm going to go through 
all these beads at least three times being that it is the shank where it's going to have the most wear the beginning of the shank I mean and one more time pulling it tight and exit here. Now, when you're finished wrapping your um, your thread, or ouch, going through, ouch, that hurt. Going through your um, thing here three times, you want to exit out of this side bead here. So you want to be exiting here. You have two beads, one on each side. I hope you can see that. Make sure you're exiting out of this bead here on either side. Okay. Now you're going to pick up an 11 0 And you're just going to go through the next side bead in that row. Like that. And place the 11 0 between the two three millimeter fire polish. Pick up an 11 0 into the next bead and do that all the way down, keeping your ring or your thread nice and tight. See? Pick up an 11 0, exit through there. up an 11 0 exit all the way down one side I need to put some beads here because it's not um, oops my mouse hit. Okay, now we're getting close to the other side of the ring. So you're going to exit through your last three millimeter. You're going to go through your two 11 0 seat beads again on the ring base. Pull that thread through. And now you're going to go down the other side of your ring band. Picking up so make sure your exit on the other side, going down towards the side, pick up an 11 0 and place that between your ring band or your beads. And this one doesn't want to go in there. It's because I split my thread. This is why I really hate Nymo. As you can see, I split it, so I need to go back through it. There we go. So be very careful <laughs> when you're doing this and you're using Nymo to pull that thread back so you don't poke through it. And I'm going to go along the bottom here, placing an 11-0. Between each one. Okay. And 
in there. We're down to our last one. Now you're just going to cut across into these two 11 O's like so. And now your tail is exiting over here. So you want to weave your thread back up into here. I'll show you if I can. I'm just going to go through where I'm, where I'm exiting here with the um, crystal my thread is exiting right there. There we go. And I'm going to get close to where this is. It's really going to be hard for you to see. So. Go down into this one. Yeah. Okay, now that the ring is all sewn, all I'm doing is going to weave my end in. So I want to show you how to do this with your tail and your main working thread tied together. So you're only doing this once. So I'm just dropping right down into there, staying in the thread path. And actually, I didn't want to go that way. Oopsies. I want it to go this way. So I'm going to go back out of that super duo. I exited here. I want to go through this one more time because it's exiting out of this. Okay, let's see if I can show you this. Out of this super duo. And I'm still way over here. So just weave your thread around. It. So now when I drop down in here, I'm on the other side and I'm going to come through the top. And through this one, if I can. And I am going to bend the crap out of my needle now. It's inevitable it was going to happen. There we go. Alright. Didn't even bend it too much. Now, I will exit my needle. Right where my thread is exiting. And I kind of have to do this. Wiggle it through some that 15 0 which is preventing it from going in. Pull in a different angle maybe. Out towards the front. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's going to give me a hard time. Darn it. Well what I was trying to do, I probably could, yeah, and I will. I will take another needle and I'm going to thread my tail onto another needle. And I'm trying to, instead of trying to bust this bead here, I'm just going to go in that way and exit and bring my thread out so it's side by side with both of them. Got it? See? Now let's tie these in a knot. And I'm going twice around the first loop. Pulling it good and tight. Ooh! Wait a minute. I've got a mess here. There we go. And another knot. And you will, if you used black thread and black beads, you'll never see this knot. But it's not going to stay like that. Okay, so I'm exiting here. I'm just going to put my needle 
so I can exit at the bottom of my ring right here and pull this down. And now I'm going to weave through some beads, pulling my knot with me. And I'm staying on the outer part of this ring, on the outer, right in here, where the middle ones join the, this one here, because it's the easiest place to get your beads into. And you could even tie a half hitch knot in there between the super duos, just to secure your, your, um, I'm even going to wrap it a third time. Oh, secure your thread and then run it through some beads and cut it off both your tail and your I'm just showing you how easy it is as long as you stay on the outer part of that super duo you can get your needle through there All right. so let's cut that off good and secured and let's cut that off with your tail which is all weaved in now. And there you have your gorgeous black and gold pinwheel ring. Are these not just gorgeous? I really hope you like this ring, this particular design. Maybe make a pair of earrings. I might make a pair of earrings with the black and the gold because I really, really like this. And I'm really not a gold person. And even the band is is stunning. Well, I hope you guys have fun making this as much as I had designing it. And um, upcoming video will be um, a new bracelet design. Some summer fun. And it's called Simply Simple Bracelet. And that's just the name of it because it is that simple so <laughs> it looks complicated but it's really not so i'll see you all soon on the next video have a great day bye everyone